Buenas tardes todos, Hamzo, Tauto Isla, Tauto Guam, and Tauto Universidad. Hapa Ade! It's my privilege each commencement to give welcoming remarks at this stirring and very exciting ceremony. It's a time to celebrate personal achievements for the graduates, but also a time to remember about those who helped us get here. We can take a minute to think about our past, but we need to spend hours thinking about our future. Think about who you are as a person, who you are as an islander, as a University of Guam Triton. Think about all the people who helped you get here. And it doesn't matter whether you live in Umata or Dedido, whether you were born in Bueno Chuf or Guam Memorial Hospital, whether your parents and grandparents were born in Luzon or in California. The University of Guam is your home today and your academic home forever. You made the natural choice to this institution and you know more than any other university graduate in the world today that there is no place like home. We live in an uncertain world in which many decisions are made by powerful people around the world. In spite of all your education, and in spite of the fact that we live under the American flag, very few of us will ever have the opportunity to vote for any of these powerful people. In November of this year, millions of Americans will have the opportunity to vote for Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, perhaps Bernie Sanders. But even if you are a U.S. citizen and you live in Guam, you won't get that opportunity. Interestingly, not everybody is denied the opportunity to vote for or participate in a process that leads to becoming president of a country. Earlier this month, thousands of Filipinos here in Guam, many of them also U.S. citizens, voted for incoming President Rodrigo Duterte. President Remengesa of the Republic of Palau tells me all the time that the votes of Palauans in Guam made the difference and elected him president in the past. Many of our fellow Palauans here on Guam are also U.S. citizens. The system in the Marshall Islands and the Federated States of Micronesia is different but I know that hundreds of our fellow Micronesians and Marshallese on Guam voted for leaders who in turn selected the presidents of their countries. Her Excellency Hilda Heine, who's our commencement speaker today, and His Excellency Peter Christian of the FSF. Today we will honor 19 new second lieutenants into the U.S. Army. Unlike their fellow officers, they will not be able to vote from their commander-in-chief. But it isn't true that none of us can vote for president. Many of you already have. You voted for President Duterte or President Remengesa. Isn't it ironic that even if you were educated in an American institution, and probably no more, than the average American about America, you will not be able to vote for the president unless it's president of another country. This is not the trite way. This is not democratic. And this is not even the American way. Or is it? As you look into the future, and as the tomorrow people are engaged in the process to decide, decide the future, of their island, you Tritons must work towards changing this undemocratic colonial system that we live in today. <laughs> Fellow graduates, do not accept this reality as just part of how we live in Guam. Work hard, argue with, explain and educate your fellow Americans, your fellow citizens around the world to allow the people of Guam to vote for president. And if it can't be for president of the United States, then let it be president of a new republic of Guam. <laughs> Embrace that challenge. Make that change. Move the needle. Work towards the democratization and the decolonization 
Indonesia, Manila, Abanga, the Manesho, the Tekan of Sinahanga, Todo do Isaacian, Sia, Itanota, Todo do Itanota. Our trifold mission as the new great University of Guam, Ina, is full presenti to enlighten, to discover, and to serve. Serve your fellow islanders by making sure that all islanders have the path to select their own leaders. Enlighten your fellow citizens of America and the world about Guam and its unique history. Discover the power that a fully engaged intellect and capacity to make a difference as authorized by this diploma that you will receive today to make that change, to make real change, and to make a difference. I'm counting on all of you to make that happen. My generation has prepared a path, but we're traveled down, we haven't traveled down that road very far. And you need to complete that journey. Mahatma Gandhi, the great Indian leader, who certainly would understand the need to decolonize Guam, underscored the connection between knowledge and discovery and service when he said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Now, there are many things I've heard in many commencement addresses and speeches. One of the most memorable was from a high school in North Carolina where Narissa and my grandson graduated from high school. The valedictorian, who had a troubled past, ended his speech with some pretty stirring words. He said, Tomorrow, the world will go on, but it won't go on without me. Tomorrow, and you must remember these words, tomorrow the sun will rise, and I will arise with it. Tomorrow the challenges will face me, but I'm ready for it because of my UOG education. Tomorrow the world will be you, and I will be renewed with it because I am a proud fighter. Proud friends always say, Viva UOG! Viva! Viva UOG! Viva! Viva UOG! Viva!